Go ahead, man. What's up? If you have a PC with an empty PCIe X4 or greater slot, then you can get insane responsiveness gains by installing an NVMe drive if you don't already have one. This is how to install an NVMe drive in an old motherboard. It is the end of August 2020. You're going to need an NVMe drive and an M.2 PCIe part as well so you can install it into an empty PCIe slot. Install that into the PC and make sure the SSD has a partition table set to GPT type, not MBR. You're also going to need the boot disk utility, which I will link below and a USB drive to install it onto or other media you can install it onto like a hard drive. In my case, I use the USB stick and Windows installation media. If you're installing Windows fresh, I found this guide on winrate.com. It has a post date of 2016, November 7th, and was last edited 2020, April 21st. As with any new procedure I'm unfamiliar with, I read the steps thoroughly and took notes to visualize and understand it. So reading through this guide, it links us to an additional statement describing how the Clover bootloaders and VME drivers capabilities are used. It also warns if cloning Windows to sys prep first. I'm not really sure what the details are on this, so you'll have to look it up yourself if that's what you're going to do. Then it goes into an updated step 3A from the original guide, so let's head back to that. And heading back, we see advantages including wide compatibility, no BIOS modding, and an easily updatable EFI. Changes to the config are one favorite OS text editor away. On the BIOS modding, I was going to go with that originally, but opted for Cloverboot as it is less invasive and as such, I guess would take less time than waiting to rewrite a BIOS. We have a disadvantage of slightly longer boot times because it does need to get into the bootloader first, but this can be decreased by changing values inside the config. Again, we see how the guide works using its NVMe driver. So essentially we're doing two boots, one boot into the USB drive or wherever you install the bootloader, which then lets us boot into Windows. I wonder if you can like get multiple Clover boot installations and just keep making them boot into each other endlessly. Now I'm wondering if you can install the BDU boot utility onto the same drive as you're going to install Windows onto, which would actually be the most streamlined. The guide shows us we also need a bootable Windows installation media with a note to non Windows 10 users. This is where I strayed from the guide as I had already already installed Windows onto the NVMe drive regularly. Even though the BIOS doesn't show the NVMe drive, the Windows installer found it and installed Windows no problem. But on that first reboot after Windows installer does its thing, I could not boot into the NVMe drive even though Windows was installed on it already because the BIOS was still not seeing it. So I followed the Clover guide up to the point it uses the Windows installation media to install Windows on the NVMe and it worked fine. Reading on, the installation steps are as follows. Insert the USB flash drive or SD card into your machine. Open up boot disk utility. Select your flash drive or hard disk. Then select format disk and wait for the magic. When it's done, check if you can see a 200 meg partition in your Windows Explorer with files on it. If that's not the case, then BDU failed. This happens to the poster sometimes when fooling around with different bootloader file system settings. Yada yada. Access your Clover stick via Explorer. And here we are at 3A, which is where that additional statement to the guide comes in. So here we see copy this file which is the nvme express driver to legacy bios there's a note to legacy bios users and 3b says to edit the config file changing the timeout value to something lower than the five which it has on it has just changed the number now on the additional statement the updated Updated step from the original guide. Let's see, no users might not have all directories present in their installation and we need to create them. This is the new driver structure, driver directory structure, EFI slash clover slash drivers. And that leads us into three more directories. 
BIOS off in UEFI. We need to copy the NVMe express driver in the off directory to both the BIOS and UEFI directories mentioned above. 3A part 2, you also need to create the following directories unless you already have one or both and copy the NVMe express driver to them as well. And this is in the EFI slash Clover. We create drivers 32 UEFI and also driver 64 UEFI. And we also have a link to how to configure Clover's config. So if you have any questions on this that cannot be answered, here on YouTube, go over to the win rate forum. This thread looks like it's still pretty active. With the last post being 2020, August 24th. So going back to the main guide, it tells us to reboot our machine and boot into the USB stick. BIOS, there's not much to it, just boot into it. With UEFI, it says if possible, disable CSM or change the storage OP ROM to UEFI only and then set the stick as your boot device. Exit and save changes. Next step, attach your Windows installation media. Again, this is where I deviated from it, but continuing on with the guide, we go into the Clover bootloader and you pick your Windows installation media via EFI boot. Continue your Windows setup and delete all partitions on your NVMe drive. It might be possible, I'm not 100% sure, to have the Windows installation media on the NVMe drive itself, as long as you create a partition for it and don't delete that, but it's probably better to be safe to not do it that way. Next step, step eight, if following the guide correctly, the Clover EFI bootloader should detect your Windows installation and boot from it. Step nine, install your drivers and tweak your Windows as you wish, and don't forget your vendor's NVMe driver for highest performance. This guide is still a work in progress. Credits go to the Clover team. Enjoy. Let's recap my process. Install the MVME drive with the M.2 adapter into the computer which is going to use it. And install Windows 10 on it regularly as you normally would. Which means disconnecting any drives other than the NVME drive. Once you have Windows installed, and you restart, Windows still won't boot from the NVMe drive without Clover. So boot into your old Windows installation and run the boot disk utility. Use this boot disk utility to format the USB stick, which will install Clover onto it. Once you have Clover on that stick, shut down and disconnect your old Windows drive. Go into your BIOS and have it boot into the USB stick. I don't remember this next part exactly, but I did have to point Clover to the NVMe Windows SSD installation, but after that first time it was automatically booting up into it. That's it. Windows is installed. It boots up mad fast. In the same way going from a traditional hard drive to an SSD is an incredible value when compared to upgrading the entire system. I would go so far as to say going from a standard SSD to NVMe is an even better value. It doesn't just breathe new life into an old system. It supercharges it and really lets you see the true power of your processor when it comes to everyday tasks since you're feeding it data as fast as the platform allows. Here's a boot time comparison. Windows did boot up quicker on the HDD than on the NVMe or SSD, but they were not all updated to the same point. The HDD Windows was updated until February 2020 with the SSDs being updated more recently to August 2020. Additionally, there is that time around Clover which can be lowered for faster booting. And even though the HDD booted into the desktop quicker, the other drives appear to have their CPU idle down much faster, which meant it was faster at fully booting startup programs and background processes. And here's some Crystal Disk benchmark numbers. The NVMe SSD was reaching its advertised read and write speeds, but googling bandwidth limitations for PCIe, we see that it can go even faster. If we use an SSD with a 2 gig read and write speed, in any case, the prices on these drives are projected to go down over the next quarter, but I would not wait until next year to do this upgrade, as computer components have a tendency to have their prices fluctuate wildly over the course of a few months. I think that's going to be it for this one. Hopefully it helps somebody. Take care.